The following program is rated PG. The following program deals with mature subject matter and contains scenes of sexuality. Viewer discretion is advised. Sean Luke's ready to leave. I can't wait to see his country home. I can't wait to become his wife. I know just the place. The spot we met. That riverbank on the Seine. We're the only cord in this place. Oh, we'll invite everyone we've ever met. I don't care how much it costs. Am I to take you and so is yes? Yes. Sean Luke, yes. Yes, of course I'll marry you. I finally met a man who isn't after me for the crane money and power. A man I can trust. No one or nothing is going to come between our love. Perhaps Pierre can convince you I'm serious about collecting my money. All right, all right. Call off your gun. Now, go. This fiancée of yours, does she know you support yourself smuggling drugs? Of course not. And you're certain you've never mentioned my name? Do not worry. There is no one in the world who knows of our association. I'm looking for Jean-Luc. I'm sure... Darling, you are here. Okay, so uh, we were just saying goodbye. <sighs> Give me a minute to get dressed, and we will head to the country. <laughs> you didn't introduce me, Jean-Luc. Oh, I'm so sorry. Well, it doesn't matter. I don't expect I'll ever see them again. Charlotte must die tonight. But he paid you the money he owed? I don't trust him. And unfortunately, the pretty American girl has now seen my face. She must be killed as well. Let me out! Monsieur! How did you get in there? My despicable excuse of a boyfriend locked me inside. I will kill him. Where is he? I don't know who... Uh... He was here with the American girl. You must remember. Oh, yes, uh, she was looking for you. They left a while ago. He will be very sorry when I get to his apartment. I do not believe uh, you will find him there, mademoiselle. Did I he... heard him say they are going to be going somewhere tonight. Did he say where he was going? Yes, uh, but I can't remember. Think hard. I have to know where they're going. That damn fortune teller upset our daughter, Whitney. I told her I thought about con artists who prey on vulnerable young people. There was something so mean about her. Even her eyes. Eve, you didn't tell me that you went to go see the fortune teller. I... I was worried about you. I knew you'd be angry about Whitney. So what did she say? seem to have struck a chord, Dr. Russell. It's nonsense. I don't have anything in my past that I'm ashamed of. You've never hidden anything from him? If you are trying to imply that I have been dishonest with my husband... I'm not implying I know. You know nothing. You are a phony. You prey on people's emotions and fears and you confuse them. And what do you fear, Doctor? Oh, certainly not you. Well, you should. Because I know what you're hiding. 
all of it. The secret you've kept from your husband, what you did years ago, outside of town. You think I don't know? Well, I do. And I can prove it. I'll tell you that secret that you've kept hidden in your soul all these years. I'll tell you every horrible detail right now. Eve, what did she say? <sighs> Not much. It, just silly things. I didn't like her, though. You know, I did see someone earlier could be this gypsy, but I had no idea she was telling fortunes. You didn't give her permission to set up a tip, did you? Absolutely not. I mean, where is she? No, let's go, Charity. There's so many other attractions. Oh, come on, Mom. We'd like to have our fortunes told. I'm sorry. We're closed. You'll have to leave. Oh, can't we just have a quick reading, please? A gypsy fortune teller? You can't be serious, Teresa. It was right there in her crystal ball. Me, in a satin gown, in a mansion, signing my name on a piece of paper. Teresa Lopez Fitzgerald Crane. You're asking for your heart to get broken all over again. Oh, that's all right, McGill. When I'm living in the big house on a hill, married to Ethan, I won't hold any of this negativity against you. In fact, I'll even loan you my car and a driver anytime you want. I'm really glad that you and Sheridan had a good talk. Why are you looking at me like that? I guess there's no time like the present. For what? Where did he say he's taking the American girl? Look, I've told you everything I recall. Wait. I think he said something about a uh, country house. I know exactly where it is. I can't wait to see your country home, Jean-Luc. Perhaps we could live there part of the year once we're married. I have an idea. What if we marry right away? You mean elope? Well, I know you are thinking about a huge wedding in September, but... Uh, uh, forget I mean. No, no, no. An elopement. I like the idea. The romance of it. Of course, my family would be utterly scandalized, but <laughs> that's the best thing about it. There's a quaint little church not far from my house. You know, I go there tomorrow and make the arrangements. That sounds wonderful. I love you so much, Jean-Luc. This is all a dream come true. You can deliver my wedding present to the happy couple tonight. Too bad they'll never see morning. I'm going to have a talk with this gypsy person. No, I forget it, Grace. Just don't go looking for her. Well, but she has no business being here, especially scaring people. Well, you're not going to go alone. I'm going to go with you. You guys coming? I'll pass. I don't want to go back there. Suit yourself. Isn't this great, Mom? No, I don't like it, Charity. 
I don't want to see you get hurt again, Teresa. For the last time, Miguel, I'm not going to. What? Some guy's proposing to his girlfriend? It's Ethan Crane. It can't be. You know I love you, Gwen. Yes. Will you marry me? capable of handling this myself, Sam. Forget it, Grace. What? She's just some silly old lady upsetting people with absurd predictions about the future. What? You know, you're really brave, you know that? <laughs> what? Just because I'm not afraid of some silly old gypsy fortune teller? Because you won't give up trying to piece together the first 20 years of your life. It must be pretty frightening sometimes. It's not brave, Sam. There's just nothing scarier than not knowing about where you came from. This idea that you had earlier about maybe having a sister or even a twin. You know, I'm afraid to even hope. I mean, what if we find out it's true and, and don't find her? I don't know if I can handle being disappointed again. I don't like this, Charity. Let's go. Oh, don't be such a scaredy cat. This has got to be the best thing I've seen at the whole entire carnival. I've never seen anything. Great effects. They fit it. It's not race to me. She looks like her. Take my word for it. It's not race. <laughs> oh, what a world! What a world! Let's get out of here. You don't want to watch this. No, he's my Ethan. I love you, Gwen. I always have and I always will. Marry me. Out of my way! But, Mademoiselle, you're too early to drive. I haven't even warmed up yet. I should not have told you where the men and the woman are going this evening. But you did. And now I'm going to the country as well. That two-timing rat and his beloved are in for a big surprise. This time, tomorrow, you'll be my wife. You've made me so happy, Jean-Luc. Oh, if only this moment could last forever. Can I, love? Mm. From now on, nothing will come between us. on E's face when you brought up that fortune teller? I was too busy watching the muscles in TC's neck go taut. You know, I've never seen either one of them so tense. Yeah, I wonder what it was that they exactly told him. Well, I'll ask the fraud myself. I'll ask her what the hell she thinks she's doing scaring the wits out of half the people here in Harmony. There's Whitney. Hey, Whitney. Mrs. Bennett, she Bennett. Hi, sweetheart. Hey, you know, we just saw your mom and dad, and I bet they could do with a glimpse of their beautiful daughter. I'll check in with them. Catch you later. Hey, Whitney. I heard that you had your fortune told earlier. Who told you that, my mom? Actually, it was your dad. Well, forget it. I mean, I've forgotten it already. Well, what exactly did she tell you? A murder? A killer in my family? That's a horrible thing to say. You were right, Winnie. This is a complete waste of time. I didn't bring my friend in here so you could scare her to death. I'm only telling you what I see. Whitney will cause a murder if she continues to pursue her dream of becoming a champion tennis player. That's ridiculous. Whitney wouldn't hurt a fly, much less kill somebody. I didn't say Whitney was gonna commit the murder. Then who? Her daddy. Whitney, what exactly did the fortune teller tell you? I don't even remember. I just wish you wouldn't go over there. Sorry, it sounds like she really upset you. 
it's silly, I know. I mean, my parents taught us not to believe in any kind of psychic stuff. I mean, Simone even got grounded once for calling some psychic hotline. I remember. I never bought into any of it. But there was something about this old woman. When I got out of that gypsy tent, I don't even know how to explain it. I felt like I had been around somebody really bad. Almost evil. Sweetheart, she sounds like an awful woman. I'm gonna find out just who this gypsy is. Timmy doesn't like being scared. Tell Timmy why everything's flying around. I can't say for sure, but I have an idea. Then make it stop. What if I can't, Timmy, but I can't? Huh? This is incredible. How do you do it? We've seen enough, Charity. I want to go. Oh, don't be such a scaredy cat, Ma. I want to see the whole thing. If you're scared, go outside. I am not leaving you here alone. Oh, well, then just a couple more minutes. Please. We've got to get out of here. No kidding. I was ready ten minutes ago. Shh. Wow. I've been a complete and total fool to take this long to ask you. Please tell me you'll be my wife. Don't do this to yourself, Teresa. Let's get out of here. There's nothing you can do. Ethan Crane is going to marry that girl. So say something. You're scaring me. Please. Anything. Don't, sis. Don't do this to yourself. No guy is worth it. Did you hear that? Someone must have gotten hurt. It sounded like a woman's cry. Maybe we can help. I know it hurts, but it'll be okay. You'll see. I'm the one who's supposed to marry Ethan Crane. I know that was your dream, Teresa, but that's all it ever was. You gotta face reality for once. The fortune teller promised me I would be Mrs. Crane. I told you. I can see your life, your past, your present, and your future. I want to believe you so much, but I'm trying to be mature. Think about it, Teresa. Either I'm very good at making wild guesses or I'm telling you the truth, and you'll live in a mansion as Mrs. Crane. It's your choice whether you believe it or not. I believe you. I do. I'm going to marry Ethan after all. <sighs> Listen to yourself. The fortune teller? You can't base your life on some garbage from a crystal ball. You know better. Come on, Teresa. We're getting out of here. Did you hear that? I hope I'm wrong, but that sounded like Teresa. Pilar's daughter? I don't hear it anymore. You know, Teresa must be so upset about starting that fire. It was an accident, Mr. Bennett. I better go find her. Okay, let us know if we can do anything. Mrs. Bennett, forget what I said about the gypsy, okay? I mean, I think I just got shook up because I've never been around anybody like that. She's probably harmless. She's so harmless. Why does she keep scaring the wits out of young girls and their parents? Well, not for long. Curtain's gonna come down on her nasty little act here in harmony. Yeah, I just wish. <sighs> Forget it. No, fair. You wish what? I wish that she really could look into the future. I mean, wouldn't that be something if she could look into mine? Tell me if I ever find my family. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. Just as I imagined it. It's very modest, but I'm glad you like it. I'm sure it's much smaller than uh, any house 
you have ever lived in. That's probably why I like it so much. It's cozy. And charming and romantic. It's the most wonderful house I've ever seen. Well, now I know you aren't teasing me. You who grew up in a big American mansion. Mansions aren't all they're cracked up to be. I would want to live in a house like this. Oh, you're not serious. Oh, yes, I am. The house I lived in in Harmony was huge, just as you thought, but so cold. Well, surely your family could afford to hit it. That cold in temperature. Cold because there's no love inside it. No caring. You go for days without seeing anyone. And you'd never be missed. I never want to live like that again. You are a uh, constant amazement to me. Sheridan Crane. Is that good, I hope? Better than good. You are perfect to me. Are we really getting married tomorrow? Nothing on earth could stop me. Mm. I'm sorry I cannot afford the time for much of a honeymoon right now. But you know we can take a few days over here. Oh. I hope I haven't gotten in the way of your work. No, of course not. Because those men that were in your apartment, they just seemed so important. It seemed like you were in the middle of a big business deal. If you have to go back to Paris to finish up, but I'll understand. No, 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 my sweet bride-to-be. I finished up uh, with those men before we left. My business uh, with them is over now. Mm. It's me, Roger. I followed Jean-Luc and the girl to his house in Yveline. Are there neighbors around? Not one. It is very isolated here. Excellent. It will be easier to do your work. And make sure their deaths look like an accident. I understand. It is too bad she must die with him. She is so beautiful. And so happy tonight. You may come in now, Sheridan. Oh, it's lovely. So many beautiful old things everywhere. The house belonged to my grandparents. They left it to me when uh, they passed on. I keep meaning to update the furnishing, but... Uh, oh, no. It's perfect just the way it is. What is that? <sighs> A present from my grandfather to my grandmother on their wedding night many years ago. An old French saying. Even a good marriage will shipwreck on deceit. Why, that's for sure. Secrets and lies are the quickest way to destroy any relationship. Yeah, well, that will never happen to us. I know, Jean-Luc. Wouldn't it be wonderful if everyone could understand that it isn't money or power that makes life worthwhile? Just the truth. And love. What are you thinking? The first time I met you, I assumed uh, you would be so tough and strong and... But you're not, are you? You're more like a little girl inside, huh? You must think I'm so foolish. Never. Hmm. 
Who are those children of you? I'm not so sure you want to know. Mm -hmm. I want to know everything about you. Okay. You asked for it. Actually, they're children that come from broken homes that have ended up in an orphanage. I send money to them to help them out. Well, now that you know, you still want to marry me? Oof, more than ever. Jean-Luc and Sheldon have a surprise in store for them tonight, and it's not an engagement gift. You're her best friend, but maybe you can talk to her. I knew it. The second I heard that scream, I knew it was Teresa. I, I want to get her home, but she's not even hearing me. I've never seen her this upset. I just don't understand how she got her hopes up about Ethan Crane again. I mean, the last time I saw her, she was at least trying to accept the fact that she was never going to be with him. For once, it wasn't all our fault. Poor Teresa. Sometimes she's her own worst enemy. I don't see anyone crying. Well, I guess whoever it was is okay now. Then maybe we can pick up where we left off. Hmm, where was that? I forget. Very funny, Gwen. We can get married as soon as you want. Maybe even have a double wedding with Sheridan? You're getting a little ahead of yourself, aren't you, Ethan? Oh my god, you haven't even said yes yet. Should I get back down on my knee? No, that's okay. No. I want to do this right. I'm only going to do it once. Good Hotchkiss, will you make me the happiest man in the world and become my wife? What is it, Gwen? Don't you love me? Have I blown it by taking too long to ask you? Have you fallen out of love with me? No, Ethan. But of course I still love you. <sighs> Thank goodness you scared me there. I, I don't blame you for wondering what kind of husband I'll be, considering the role model I've had, but I'm a quick learner. <laughs> and I figure if I just do the opposite of everything my father did in his marriage, be on the right track. That sounds like a place to start. And that's a yes, right? Why did I think I was kidding? Me? Mrs. Ethan Crane? In my dreams. Stop beating yourself up, Teresa. Someone's gotta do it. You and Gil are being way too nice. What do you want us to do? Make you say ten Hail Marys and ten Our Fathers? Oh, I know. You need 40 lashes as one of Luis's belts. You probably deserve it. You, you both must think I should be committed. Well, now that you mention it. How did I ever believe that the most eligible bachelor in the country would ever look at a flaky Cinderella wannabe? Ethan did look at you, Teresa. Yeah, with horror and disgust after I poured paint, milkshakes, and barbecue sauce all over his head. Hey girls, there's something I've got to tell you about. Who needs those nasty old boys? Boys who need some, they only bring trouble. They'll make your heart. You're that girl dumped paint on me at the carnival. What? Oh no. You're the guy. You're an accident waiting to happen. I'm out of here. No! Here, this will get all the guts Get her out. away from me. No, it's all right. It's a bird. It's so sad. They come on strong and then diss you back. I don't believe it when a boy tells me that a friend is all he wants to be. Because a friend's a friend that... 
Those were accidents, Teresa. Nathan must think I'm some psycho. I actually had this fantasy that the next time Ethan saw me, he would realize I was the girl he'd been waiting for all his life. The truth is, if he saw me again, he'd probably have me arrested. You're making it worse than it is. I waited so long for him. I wouldn't even go out with any of the guys in school. I was saving myself. Well, that part you can keep doing. Don't worry, McGill. I am through with boys. All boys. I may even join a convent. You in a nun's habit? I'm sure we can get those fashion magazines of yours forwarded. Yeah, I mean, of course you do realize you can't ever shave your legs if you're a nun. Oh, but that won't be a problem if you're going to be a virgin for the rest of your life, right? <laughs> now you're on to something, Whitney. Louise is definitely going to go for that. Stop making fun of me. Both of you. But you're being mean. We're sorry. We're just trying to get you to smile. Yeah, we all have dreams. Okay. The difference is your dreams are going to come true. You're not going to feel this way forever, Teresa. You thought you'd lost Ethan this morning, and then you started getting over it. Wait, you didn't tell me. What got your hopes up so high again anyway? It's not important. Tell her about the gypsy, Teresa. The gypsy? Your fortune teller. I went back. Oh no, Teresa, she is evil. Her face. I don't know, Charity. I don't want to know. Aww. There's something evil about this. No, I'm afraid it's going to get worse. <laughs> don't yes. worry, Mom. It's the show. It's the show. <laughs> children. We never talked about children. I suppose we didn't. How many do you want? Do you even want any? Oh, yeah, I want as many as you do. Mm. Twelve. An even dozen. Oh, impossible. I don't mean I want to give birth to all 12 of them. We can adopt. Children that no one else wants. Like uh, the ones uh, in the orphanage you support? Exactly. Some of them have special needs that require a lot of money. Well, that will be my only reservation, you know. Raising kids is very expensive, no? Well, that's not a problem. We'll have so much money, we won't even know what to do with it all. Didn't I tell you? When I marry, I come into an enormous trust fund. Oh, uh, I had no idea. I mean, I don't even know the exact amount. Just that it's obscenely huge, way more than any one person deserves. You deserve all the riches in the world. I'm serious, Jean-Luc. I want to give my money to other people. Well, I mean, of course, I, I believe in uh, donating for worthy charities. Uh, I have a better idea than that. Actually, it's been a fantasy of mine since I was little. Well, whatever it is, I'm sure you'll love it. I want to give it all away. Every last penny. <laughs> oh, you're kidding me again? Not at all. I would love that more than anything in the world. To be able to give my money to whoever needs it for whatever reason, wherever they are. I would love that more than anything. Wouldn't that be wonderful, Jean-Luc? I know that's what Diana would have done. Yes, perhaps. I just want to do something worthwhile with my life. I want to make a difference. But there are so many ways to do that. I mean, already you've changed my life by just meeting you. Nobody deserves to be as happy as I am this very second. Why are you saying that? This must have been the way Diana felt the night she died. As if she had her whole life ahead of her. Well, oh, Princess Diana's death was a tragic and timely loss. You're not she. I mean, surely you're not afraid that your life won't be so short. 
I keep telling myself that. Can I tell you something, Jean-Luc? Whatever you want, my love. I know this might sound silly, but... I don't want to go to sleep tonight. I just have this feeling that if I can live through this one night, my life won't end in tragedy like Diana's did. And I'll live to be a hundred years old. And I'll die in this bed in your arms. Old and content. Oh, well. Uh, content, yes. But you will never be old. Not to me. The lights are on. They're here. Jean-Luc and his American fiancé are in for a big surprise.